Good afternoon and welcome to St. John the Evangelist. We will begin with a few preludes this afternoon, beginning with Hark the Herald Angels Sing, found on page nine of your bulletin. We'll be continuing with Angels We Have Heard on High, found on page 10 of the bulletin.
Now we will be singing Angels We Have Heard on High, found on page 10 of the bulletin. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echo back their joyous strains. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then, for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things one usually associates with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Now 20 centuries have come and gone, and today he is still considered by many to be the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as this one solitary life. Soul felt its worth. 
rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices. to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all the oppression shall Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord Oh praise his name forever A blessed and Merry Christmas to you. Good afternoon and welcome to the parish family of St. John the Evangelist. We are blessed to have you here today and welcome if you have been away or are joining us for the first time virtually or in person. We are gathered to celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. The readings may be found in our special worship aid edition of our bulletin, including the various prayers and music for the Mass. We are blessed to have you here again at St. John the Evangelist. We continue to provide a safe and healthy mass environment with your assistance in respecting the lives of all those around you. Reminders of some of the policies we have enacted to ensure your safety include, one, continuing to require wearing mask properly over your mouth and nose at all times while you are within our church facilities, including during mass. Shields are not considered replacements for mask, so a mask must also be worn. Two, staying a respectful social distance from other individuals and families. Three, 
Receiving communion should be in the hand with your mask on. Once you have received the host, please move to the side to remove your mask and consume it, then placing your mask back on. If you feel compelled to receive communion on the tongue, we ask that you please wait at the end of the priest's communion line. Our Eucharistic ministers will only provide communion in the hand, and out of respect for the life and health of all of our parish family, we hope you would wait until all others have received before taking communion from the priest. And four, providing your generous offerings to our ushers at the exit doors of the church as you depart. You will see that the back wing doors are now available for your exit only after Mass concludes. Ushers will be posted there as well. Would you please kindly take a moment to ensure that your cell phone is powered off? Thank you, and thanks also for honoring the holy integrity of the Mass by remaining through our closing hymn. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Paul. Would you now please turn to the front page of the bulletin and join me in praying our parish prayer for peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, thank you for all creation. In the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth, and all teachers of peace, who inspire the many faith traditions, help me and all the people of the world learn how to replace hate, war, oppression, and division with love, peace, freedom, and reconciliation. Help me to embody your love in my relationships with my family, friends, strangers, even my enemies. I commit myself to this sacred task throughout my life, so let it be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise and join in our processional hymn found on page 11 of the bulletin, O Come All Ye Faithful. Page 11 of the bulletin, verses 1, 4, and then 2. Yes. 
Christmas uh, to all of you and welcome. As we uh, begin this beautiful Mass, let's pause for a moment and uh, thank God for all his gifts. Uh, and let us begin as always in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate and to enter into these sacred and profound mysteries, let's pause for a moment and call to mind all of our sins. mercy on each one of us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we await and hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication signs forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. He else you be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Tomorrow the wickedness of the earth will be destroyed. The Savior of the world will reign over us. be with you with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to st. Matthew this is how the birth of Jesus came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they lived together she was found with child through the Holy Spirit Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took his wife into his home he had no relations with her until she bore a son and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, a Merry Christmas uh, to all of you. <laughs> and certainly, uh, Christmas is a time of uh, great joy. And the word joy is mentioned uh, several times throughout uh, today and tomorrow's reading. And it's funny, whenever we hear the word joy, immediately we think of all those Christmas carols. They're filled with the word joy. But it's interesting, after the Christmas season, we never hear the word joy. I mean, people will talk about fun, they'll even talk about happiness, but never joy. And if you stop and think about it, there's a real difference between fun and joy. Fun is elusive, it's temporary, it's ephemeral, it's fleeting. We can never capture it. It never fully satisfies us. It's superficial. And believe it or not, the word fun is not mentioned in the entire Bible, not once. Americans are all after fun. They want to show all their friends how much fun they're having on their social media. But it's not mentioned once in the entire Bible. But joy is something that's different. Joy is mentioned hundreds of times in the Old and the New Testament. Joy satisfies. It endures. It lasts. It abides, even during afflictions. Joy is spiritual. It's eternal. Joy comes from God. Jesus tells us, I have told you this so that, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. It's interesting. Some people spend their whole life searching for joy, but they forget, they ignore. 
excuse me, I got it, uh, the, the cart before the horse. Uh, some people spend their entire life searching for fun, but they ignore, they forget joy. And as a priest, you meet thousands and thousands of people. But I have to tell you, the, one of the people that has the most joy, the most fun that I've ever encountered is right here in Naples. I work with him, Deacon Frank Panacea. And uh, maybe uh, some of you are familiar with the Panacea family, a wonderful family. Maybe you knew Sandy, his, uh, his wonderful wife uh, who passed away. But um, uh, Sandy and Frank, for years, they would drive their RV down to uh, Mexico and they'd bring back children to live with them in Columbus, Ohio. Now, they did that for, for two generations. Uh, it just tells you the type of people they are, wonderful, wonderful people. But the thing with uh, Frank Panacea is that I've never seen him rattled. You could say, Frank, the, I just heard the, the missiles are headed this way. Uh, he, nothing rattles him. He's completely tranquil. So I said, Frank, where did you get this sense of peace? Nothing ever uh, rattles you. You're always tranquil, always serene. What's your secret, Frank? And uh, he said, well, fun and happiness are like the stock market. They go up and down. And uh, they're elusive. And we have good times and bad. But if we acquire his peace, his joy, it abides in us. And we can weather all the storms. We can weather all the ups and downs that life throws our way. And then he it took me into his, uh, his uh, study. And over his desk, there's this magnificent oil painting. And it's a close-up of Jesus' face. And the painting really struck me because there's a single tear streaming down Jesus' face. And uh, then there's a caption at the bottom of the painting. It says, they do not understand my gift of peace. And so Frank explained it. He said, you see, most people miss the fact that on Holy Thursday night, the night before Jesus died, Jesus, his final gift to each one of us is to give us his peace. But the thing is, we snub him. We don't recognize his peace. We turn away from him. We don't accept his peace. We turn away from the Prince of peace. Now, it's an old story. It's been going on for centuries. In fact, uh, in 1932, when they were building the RCAA building, right there at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, right there in Midtown Manhattan, the RCA officials went, uh, they asked uh, this English artist, Frank Brangwin, to uh, paint four murals. Uh, in the south corridor of the RCIA building. And the theme was man's search for eternal truth. But of course, it wasn't without problems. A controversy arose the following year when the artist was finishing up his final mural. The RCIA officials discovered that Frank Brangwin was a painting a scene of a Jesus delivering the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, they confronted the artist and told him that Christ needed to be removed from the painting. And of course, the New York uh, Daily Newspapers uh, got wind of this uh, story, and, and this was the headlines that Christ is asked to be removed from the RCA building. So the whole thing is dripping with irony. And, and Brangwin at the time didn't know what to do. He told his friends privately, I don't know how you paint the Sermon on the Mount without Christ. 
but he resolved it in his own way. He turned the figure of Christ, instead of removing it, he turned the figure of Christ around. So you didn't see his face. And Christ has his back to the crowd. Now, the thing is, that would never happen. Christ would never turn his back on us. He's Emmanuel. He's with us always, even to the end of the world. But the thing is, we're the ones who turn our backs on Christ. If we're honest, both you and me, we turn our hearts away from Christ. We fill our hearts with many different things. Sports, entertainment, movies, shopping, business, finance, the social media, the list goes on and on and on. And so when I read that story, I thought to myself, that's why that painting in Frank's house struck me. That's why Jesus is so sad. That's why Jesus is crying. Because he wants to give each one of us his gift of joy and peace. But we turn away from him. We tell him day after day, there's no room at the inn. You know, one of my favorite Christmas carols of all times is Joy to the World. And there's a line in that song that's overlooked. It's a small little phrase, but we could meditate on it a lifetime. It says, let every heart prepare him room. Let every heart prepare him room. And that's the whole purpose of Advent, that both you and me are going to make room for Christ, this newborn king, so that on Christmas Day, Christ, the king of all kings, will be born anew in our hearts. You know, it's interesting, uh, as I was driving over here, uh, I must be getting old because I've never got uh, sentimental. Years ago when I was a kid, I would never reminisce and get sentimental. It must be a sign that you're getting old, but uh, I, all the memories were flooding back when I was driving here to the church, and I started to think about, uh, maybe some of you are doing this these last few days, those Christmases of long ago. And speaking of joy, there's no greater joy than coming down the stairs on Christmas morning as a kid. When you, you see the Christmas tree and all the gifts, all the presents, all the toys under the tree, talk about joy. It all feels like a dream. So I was reminiscing when I was coming down the stairs as a kid. I'd look at the tree, the gifts, but then in the corner of my eye, always was my Aunt Alma. She'd always get up early, and she's always in the kitchen. And whether it was Christmas Day or any day, she had the same breakfast. She'd have a lemon crella or a jelly donut, a cup of coffee, and a Cool's Mile cigarette. Now, she wasn't exactly caught up in the fitness craze, uh, but uh, Amma was uh, maybe the best way to describe Amma. She was like an Irish version of Aunt B from Mayberry. And uh, not only did she have that jelly donut and that cigarette and that cup of coffee, but she always, always, she'd be reading the Irish sports page, the obituaries. So she could throw some Catholic, good old fashioned Irish Catholic guilt your way. But, you know, I have to say, uh, even though she only graduated from Fitton High School in East Boston, she uh, probably had more wisdom than any professor I have ever met. And uh, like clockwork, every December 25th at the evening of uh, when Christmas was almost over, Every evening of December 25th, like clockwork, she'd always say, you know, tomorrow, December 26th, 
is the saddest day of the entire year. <laughs> so every, uh, someone would always say, why is that, Amma? Why is December 26th the saddest day of the entire year? She'd always say, because tomorrow morning, December 26th, each one of us is going to wake up and we're going to realize that after all the gifts have been unwrapped, all the presents have been exchanged, all the turkey has been eaten, all the eggnog has been drunk, each one of us deep down is going to wake up and we're going to say, is that it? Is that all there is? There's going to be an emptiness. There's going to be a longing. There's going to be a yearning, a restlessness in each of our hearts. We're never going to be completely satisfied. That's a profound statement. St. Augustine of Hippo, the most brilliant theologian, perhaps who ever lived, says something remarkably similar. It's one of his most famous quotes. Our hearts are restless, O Lord, and they cannot rest until they rest in you. Powerful. Our hearts are restless, O Lord, and they cannot rest until they rest in you. You know, the heart is a very mysterious thing. The scripture tells us who can understand it. But, you know, if you... A lot of times we picture a heart and we think of those uh, valentines we get at the Hallmark store, that it's perfectly shaped, the heart. But if you've ever seen a medical image, a photograph of the human heart, we know that's not the case. If you've looked at a medical image of the heart, you realize that it looks almost broken, lopsided. It looks like it wouldn't even work. And uh, the Italians, I'll just close with this story. They explain why the heart is a little bit broken, why it's always empty and restless, why the human heart is never satisfied. And the Italians in the Abruzzi region of Italy tell this story that God the Father, in his great wisdom, God the Father, in his great wisdom, because He's outside of space and time. He knew when he was designing the first human heart that his son Jesus was going to be born on Christmas Day to save the human race. And God the Father also knew that his son Jesus was going to sacrifice himself on Calvary out of love for you and me. And that Roman centurion on that first Good Friday was going to pierce Jesus' sacred heart. So God the Father, in his infinite wisdom, when he was designing each and every human heart, he made each heart a little bit broken, a little bit misshaped. There was something missing. And that's the reason why we're never satisfied. We can go from one pleasure to the next. We can travel the world several times. We can go from one thing to another, but nothing ever quite fulfills us. Nothing satisfies us. There's always something missing. And the Italians tell us it's because Jesus Christ is the missing piece. Only Jesus can satisfy us. Only Jesus can give us the peace and joy that this world could never provide. Only Jesus can heal us. Only Jesus can mend our broken hearts. You see, both Amma and Augustine were right. Our hearts are restless, O Lord, and they cannot rest until they rest in you. Merry Christmas to all of you.
Together, we'll stand now and profess the Nicene Creed. And uh, as is the tradition, uh, when, uh, when we say, born of the Virgin Mary, we, uh, if, you, if you're able to, uh, if you're physically able to, uh, the tradition is that we nail uh, at those words. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who at adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, turning to Jesus Christ, the King of all kings, who wants to come into your hearts, who wants to give you the joy and the peace that this world could never provide. Let us humbly turn to him. Our response will be, Christ, Son of God, hear us. For the church, especially our Pope Francis, and the bishops, that their life teaching and pastoral care will proclaim the saving event of Jesus to everyone. We pray to the Lord, Christ, Christ Son of God, God hear us. us. For the leaders of our world, like the shepherds who wonder at the sight of Jesus, that they will feel the presence of God in all people, especially in the poor and vulnerable, and in the whole of creation, we pray to the Lord, Christ, Christ Son, Son of God, God hear us. us. For our parish family of St. John the Evangelist, that we may recognize our call to be children of God and manifest in our lives the deed of God's love and compassion, goodwill, reconciliation, and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord, Christ, Christ Son, Son of God, God hear, hear us. For our troops and their families, for first responders and health care workers, for the unborn and their parents, for all victims of abuse, that they be created anew in the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ Son of God, God hear us. For worshipers who are praying online, that they may be comforted and assured that we are all one body of Christ, experiencing God's presence in the same sacrifice of the Mass. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ Son, Son of God, hear us. We remember those who have died, especially for Alexa Walker and all the holy souls in purgatory that God will welcome them into the company of the saints forever. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ Son of God, hear us. 
we especially pray for Eric F. Veerling, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ Son of God, God, hear us. And we pray in a special way for Tony and Marie Daughter and the entire Daughter family, for Adele De Stefano and her husband Vince and the De Stefano family, for Frank and Sandy Panacea, for Joe and Florence Vespo, and uh, Shirley Yorton, the, the Vespo family, for Jean and her, her good husband John and all of their loved ones, for Eric and Polly, for Fred and Joan and uh, Achilles, for uh, the Neri family, the Rogers family, the D'Onofrio and Sander family, for Deborah Marsh, we pray for Matthew Blake, Sue and Smokey, for Megan Sullivan and her baby. We pray in a special way for the Vela family, the Diagostino family, the Di Genova family, Rosalie Di Genova, and uh, all of you, all of your family members. Let's pause now for all your intentions that each one of you holds in the silence of your hearts. We lift him up to the Christ child. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. We ask all these prayers in the name of Mary's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. As a reminder, please hold your offertory gifts for until the end of Mass. An usher will be at the exit doors of the church to receive your generosity. Our offertory hymn can be found on page 12 of the bulletin, Away in a Manger, page 12. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to these coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you may make manifest the beginning of our redemption. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, whom you made all things. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so now with all the angels and archangels, with all the martyrs and the saints, with all the seraphim and cherubim, we sing the song of your glory. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Frank our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, in a special way, your faithful servant, Eric F. Verling, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant, Lord, that Eric Verling, who was united with your son, Jesus, in a death like his, that Eric, 
may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Augustine of Hippo, and his good mother, St. Monica, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all worry and fear and anxiety and distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another a socially distance a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The communion hymn can be found on page 13 of the bulletin, Silent Night, page 13. Continuing with What Child Is This, found on page 14 of the bulletin. Yeah. 
door, these tiny hands come down to reach us. Come to make the lame, to walk the blind, to see. We adore these hands, for one day they will free us. As they hold us in forged nails of Calvary. We adore these little feet that have not walked yet. For one day they'll lead the nations into love. They will break beneath the weight of all our burdens, leading on the tear-strained road to Golgotha. We adore Him, baby, Savior, King, Heaven's pure and perfect offering, sweet salvation, mercy, Lamb and Lord, we adore, we adore. We adore these lips that cry for earthly slaking. They will breathe the words of everlasting life. Though in agony will only speak forgiveness. In their thirst for love, we'll drink our bitter wine. We adore Him, baby, Savior, King, Heaven's pure and perfect offering, sweet salvation, mercy, Lamb and Lord. As he chose this world, a mother and a manger To be born amidst our cruelty and strife So will he choose peace and mercy over anger So will he die to bring us into life We adore him, baby, Savior King Heaven's pure and perfect offering, sweet salvation, mercy, Lamb and Lord, we adore, we adore, oh, we adore, we pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And I'd be remiss uh, not to thank all that made this beautiful Mass uh, possible, beginning with our sacristan, uh, Polly and Peg, and uh, certainly the wonderful lectors, uh, John and Jean, all our Eucharistic uh, ministers, all our ushers, and uh, last but not least, uh, our magnificent choir headed by Gary. You don't have to go to the Philharmonic, it's right here. 
Let's give them all a round of applause. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of you and all your loved ones, all your family members, living and deceased, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Merry Christmas to all of you. Please join us in our closing hymn found on page 14 of the bulletin, Joy to the World, page 14. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven. Oh